the symbiotes. They are looking very, very strong. Dr. Octopus, Auto Blitz, and a lot of update talk, guys. And the rest of your questions from the Mailbag channel on Discord. So if you're ready for all of that, you know what to do. Find that like button and let's go smash it! Alley flying. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? I am Valley of Flying. Welcome back to the Valley of Flying channel. I hope you had a great weekend. It is Monday, mailbag time. We are discussing a lot in this video, guys. Symbiotes, we are talking about the update and a lot more. All of your questions from the mailbag server. Now, guys, if you want your question potentially featured in an upcoming episode of the Monday mailbag, make sure you are a member of the Discord server. That is where I choose the questions from. So the link is down below and look for the section that says mailbag questions. And that is where you leave your questions. That is where I get all of these screenshots from that we are going to talk about but before we get into all of your questions guys i do want to discuss these symbiotes they're looking very very strong uh and they were a three-man team for a while and still one of the best teams in the game two more members of the team all they need to do is have that symbiote tag and it's gonna be a very strong team uh but we got information for screams kit on the blog post now there were a few leaks that happened i cannot discuss leaks on this channel i cannot discuss leaks on the stream uh rumors are fair game because they may or may not happen but when we leaks are discussed i am under nda cannot discuss them but guys tomorrow there's an awesome, awesome video coming out, and I think a lot of your questions will be answered, so make sure you are a subscriber of this channel. Make sure you click that notification bell because it is going to be a video you probably do not want to miss, especially if you're interested in the upcoming meta. Now, let's, let's discuss what we can discuss right now before we go into these questions. Let's go to the blog post from Friday. Boom, we are talking about Scream kit looks very solid now let me scroll down here to this passive because just this passive alone makes this character super super strong i mean we could we could disregard all of this stuff now this stuff is very good don't get me wrong but we could disregard all of this and just keep this passive and this is this is going to take this team to the next level uh the passive symbiotic attachment on death of any character so not just not just someone on the simio team no it could be a bunch of enemies and if you're getting a lot of summons like ultron bots or ronin bots or loki bots or whatever or the uh, summons what, whatever they're called uh that could be a lot of deaths a lot of characters dying and also potentially a lot of characters dropping below 25 percent health which means they're going to get extra speed from carnage and this is going to proc they're going to heal all symbiote allies for a percentage of this character's max health we do not know the percent numbers yet uh but yeah just that alone he's gonna be very very good also getting extra speed as well getting speed from carnage getting speed up the speed up buff from uh scream right there playing two speed up turn or speed up for two turns to self and all symbiote allies guys that is strong now if this character has three or more symbiote allies lower all enemies resistance by a percent this is a team that relies on his debuffs, so we're lowering the enemy's resistance. Very good. So this, this, just this, just as passive alone, takes care of some of the uh, some of the weaknesses on a the team. They do have some drain on the team, but I would have liked to see a little more healing from that three-man team. We get it with Scream, so this is very good. Lowering resistance, almost like upping the focus, doing the same thing by lowering resistance, kind of. So this is this is very good as well. Again, we don't know the percentage. We don't know how good this is going to be. But this alone looking looking very, very good, guys. Now, uh, the rest of the kit, I talked about it in the previous video, but I did want to highlight this passive because this passive alone looks very good. Right? We, we got disrupted, slows, offense down, clearing positive effects, applying bleeds, clearing more positive effects. I mean, this kit is just looking very good. And guys, if you want to the rest of this kit, make sure you are a subscriber of this channel. Because uh, there is, like I said, a very good video coming out tomorrow. But let's get to your questions, ladies and gentlemen. And the first question of the day, guys. Greetings from the San Fernando Valley Valley Flying. Interesting enough, the name Valley Flying, it came from the San Fernando Valley. That was my old stomping grounds, my rugby team. San Fernando Valley Rugby Club. Shout out to the Cups, guys. And uh, yeah, my coach called me Flying Hawaiian. So combine the names. That's where the name Valley Flying comes up. So 
What is up? All the way from San Fernando Valley. I am getting impatient with the game once I'm maxed out for the day and I don't have much to do. Aside from MSF, what are your top uh, five favorite hero collector games and what IPs would you like to see uh, play in as a future game? All right, uh, IPs that I like. Uh, DC is very fun. I got a weird one and this, this is, I was trying to think back at some movies I enjoyed. This one could be interesting. They would actually have to expand the movie, but I was thinking Pacific Rim. Uh, I really enjoyed that first one. Didn't like the second one as much but the first one very very good i think they could expand on that might be a very interesting ip uh i, I don't know if that's very popular if they make a lot of money but that's something that i personally enjoyed uh other hero collector games i mean i'm playing a lot of sponsored games uh raid shadow legends uh lego some of these other ones i can't think of star trek i play a lot of different games um, but, but Marvel Strike Force is my main one, brother. But Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, Dragon Champions, a, a lot of these other games that I played. So a bunch of different ones. Uh, I, I, DC, I, I played that as well. I would like to see a DC game if you're talking about IPs. But uh, I, I, Marvel Strike Force is my favorite game out of all those. So that, that is my favorite one. And hopefully with some of these changes coming along, Blitz, uh, maybe, maybe it'll, it'll be less grindy. I don't know. Next question, does positioning really matter for X-Force? I, I don't think it matters too much because they don't have that traditional tank, but what I do, I like to place Domino on the end because I don't want her dying. So I just, it seems like there's a little less chance of her dying on the end. And I place Deadpool in the middle because if he dies, Domino's alive, it doesn't really matter. So that's the only real thing I do with positioning. Uh, let me know if you guys have a preferred position for the X-Force in the, in the comments though, but that is what I do. Domino on one end and D Deadpool in the middle. Uh, greetings from Cincinnati. Hope you are and yours are safe. Same to you, brother, and all of you out there as well. Uh, content great as usual. Pull a six red star for an invisible woman. Wondering with She Hulk coming, should I keep Fantastic Four on war offense or switch them to defense? Uh, this is going to be a highly individualized thing, and uh, I don't think there's one cookie cutter, cookie cutter answer for everybody because everybody's at different places in the games. Now, a uh, couple things to consider though eight teams on war defense. So if you already have those teams set, then you probably want to keep them on offense uh if you don't have them set maybe shifting them towards defense obviously a lot is going to be determined by where you have your name or where you have your she hulk uh which one is going to make more sense for you and if you have a team ready to use namor for on offense but that's that's pretty much it and then also it's going to be determined by your alliance as well i mean for offense you're going to need between 8 to 12 offensive teams defending depending how fast your alliance clears room so just keep that in mind. If you have those teams set, uh, you're, you're free to move them wherever. But uh, the answer for everybody is going to be different depending wh what you're doing in the game, what your alliance is doing. Uh, hello from Iowa. What is up, brother? Uh, love the videos. Who do you, uh, you? I think you do an amazing job keeping positive. Never want to say anything negative about others. Yeah, I, I try to keep the uh, the channel dra as drama free as possible. Uh, not let uh, others' negativity from normal life try to infect this channel. But uh, I, I try my best. Sometimes it does get in there. Really shows your character type of guy uh, like you would like to hang around. I, I hope so. Uh, my question is. Uh, is there a mod out there for tracking alliance participation in raids and wars? Uh, remember the days of War of the Warcraft, there were some good tracking mods. So I think the thing that's really holding that back for this game is the lack of an API. I know the, the relationship when they were part of Fox and then uh, subsequently under Disney, there was some uh, the red tape they had to go through there. I'm not sure how much they have to go through now that they're under Scopely, but uh, the API is really what we need. And that's a way that we could get external data from the game to a, to a different type of third party app. So, um, that, that is what we would need before we start to see something like this. But if there's something out there, uh, that uses other tracking than what you're using, like Excel, uh, l let me know in the comments, guys. I don't, I don't really do a lot of tracking in the game myself. That's why, uh, hello, greetings from Cornwall, England. What is up, brother? Recently opened a lot, a lot of saved red orb elites, like, uh, for others for doc ock pulled a seven red star mysterio that that is not bad uh would he fit best in the sinister six team as now i wanted to know whether to build him up for eventually when i unlock doc ock so i'm using mysterio in that sinister six team now i'm not using him for a lot of damage he's, he's not great at damage but he does call a lot of assists so he's kind of an enabler for the rest of your team uh, helping them to do a lot more damage but uh, i do think right now he is part of the best version of this team uh, unless unless I see otherwise guys that that is what I'm using so if if I if I were you I would build them up but that's that's based on my roster and how I'm planning to use my sinister six though so 
Congratulations, though. That's not the worst character to get a seven red star on. Uh, really like to know if those Hero Wars shirts that you wear, get them from one place or from the Marvel theme shirt. So, uh, normally, norm, like these kind of compression shirts, normally I get them on Amazon. Uh, actually, all of them from Amazon. There's a link down below, guys. There's an Amazon affiliate link if you want to check them out. Now, if you're talking about uh, the other shirts that I that I wear some from time to time on this channel, like these, the Valley merch. There's, these are from T Public. There's also a link for these. In the description and there's actually a sale going on right now the new mr green shirts i gotta pick some of these up this whale out shirts i don't have any of those either but yeah it looks uh, as of me recording this looks like a sale goes on for another day and uh a few more hours so yeah if you, if you want to stock up on these i know people are asking when to stock up on on uh, some valley merch now is the time because of the sale but uh if you're looking for the ad the compression shirts like this brother uh those are on amazon all right next question greetings from florida brother thanks for all the great content i hope you and your family are doing great same to you all, all of you guys out there i hope all of you guys are doing great i uh, got lucky pulled x23 and mega orb from the first four rounds of doc ock event it's lucky to get me five stars to unlock doc ock nice i was wondering if you think you'd be a great character to take into the dd3 city nodes started with symbiote spider-man carnage and i'm halfway through the nodes i know i could get through with just those two but i'm about to get there i don't have any biomass for venom or any uniques for other decent characters uh, is it worth the investment to take him into tier 14? So the my answer for that is going to be based on how you intend to use him after you're done with Dark Dimension 3. Because for a lot of these characters that I'm building up, I want to be able to use them outside of Dark Dimension 3 as well. For me, that's actually more important than Dark Dimension 3 because once you're done with those two runs, I don't really see a reason to go back to this game mode. So Doc Ock, if you're planning to use him, and I, I if you're, he's kind of a war character. If war is that important, you want to build him up, then yes. Will he help you in Dark Dimension 3? Yeah, I mean, having another body there will take some pressure off Symbiote, Spider-Man, and Carnage. He does have long cooldowns, so I'm not sure how much he's going to help you, especially if you're not bringing other Sinister Six characters in there. But uh, it look, it's looking like the symbiotes, brother. I, I might want to just uh, hold off on Doc Ock and just I know I know it's going to take a lot of biomass for Venom, but Venom and then uh, some of the other symbiotes when they get up there, uh, that, that's just you probably could auto through DD3 with those characters and they'll give, provide you a lot of uh, value outside of DD3 as well. So you might want to hold off for the symbiotes, but Doc Ock. It, it depends. It really depends on what you plan to do with him. Uh, next question is greeting from Smoky California. Shout out to you, my buddy, uh, Catfish Caveman, for beating Dark Dimension 3. Nice. Congratulations, brother. I uh, was wondering what you thought of this planned roster for DD3. Global is Phoenix, Magneto, Juggernaut, Ultron, have leftover gear for Pyro. So you're at a gear 13, my only seven red star pull. All right, so normally with Pyro, I'd say no, but that that might make it worth it because I think uh, with that, you're planning to use them a lot outside of that. Cosmic, you got Minerva, Hela, Star-Lord, Ebony Maw, and Sif. I have so many skill characters. City is Spider, uh, Symbiote, Spider-Man, Carnage, JJ, Luke Cage, Punisher. Those last three were early to get me through DD3. I used the Defenders. All right, so... Uh, you got a lot of characters and if and if you have all the resources to get all of these characters up then do it I think for a lot of players though the the resource crunch is real and uh, DD4 is the real prize with Dr. Doom so for that I would go I would go as minimal as possible so let's talk about the global you could get by with if you already have these guys up uh, maybe Phoenix Magneto and Juggernaut Ultron's gonna give you some uh value outside of that if you really want to do pyro you can i would probably use that mutant gear maybe on colossus maybe on emma frost instead of pyro even with that red stars and and probably even before magneto and juggernaut unless unless you really uh set on investing him cosmic minerva is good hello is good star lord is good for the energy ebony maw sif i mean if you have her already i know she's skill characters not a lot of great skill characters you might want to hold off not just for the skill gear but for the catalyst though so uh you could probably get through it with uh just ebony maw star lord Hel hella minerva just those characters as far as city symbiote spider-man carnage is good if you have anybody you already have really close to d uh dark to uh gear tier 13 be very good punisher does fit in that skill category as well and there's not a lot of skill characters i would probably do punisher before sif and uh that is it try to go real bare bones as minimal as you can uh the characters you have are decent uh but yeah i would, I would go a little minim more minimalistic if i were you with this uh maybe may not be the first to suggest this but i have a solution that would make pvp more fun fun turn your uh you Turn one, you select a tune that you would want to go, then your opponent takes a turn. 
No more speed traps. I'm sick of an opponent take five, six turns to my one. Keep smashing, brother. Well, uh, so a lot of that has to do with the draft. Uh, the, a lot of knowing the turn order, uh, knowing the speed of the characters, knowing the some of the interactions with the other characters. Uh, yeah, I mean, speed is speed is what's winning right now in PvP, brother. Uh, what do you have against Sandesky, Ohio? Nothing. I have nothing against Sandesky, Ohio. It's a point of Cedar Point, America's roller coaster. Yeah, no, nothing against uh, Sandesky. That's that's just where they relegated uh, Namor to. That's that's all, brother. Hello, Valley Vine. Greetings from Scotland. I want to fill out each DD3 section with a full team of five as unnecessary as just So we talked about this in the last question. It kind of is unnecessary, but if you are hell-bent on doing it, Let's let's see the characters. Uh, Symbiote Spider-Man, Carnage, Venom, ready to go for the city notes with Maw, Minerva, Hello Thanos to do Cosmic. My bio is uh, my bio and Mystic is free right now. So who would you recommend? Black Bolt and Ghost Rider at this point? I, I would. Black Bolt helps a lot. You're gonna use him outside of uh, outside of Dark Dimension Three. So and I, I use him all the time outside of Dark Dimension Three and in Dark Dimension Three if uh, if if I'm gonna know that I could use him in. So Black Bolt is very good. Ghost Rider, I don't recommend getting him up to gear tier 14 either. Uh, he might be kind of unnecessary for the city lanes, especially with the symbiotes coming up. So maybe you want to rethink that one, but I don't regret taking him up. Uh, nothing close to build except for Globe, except for Ultron. I don't have Phoenix unlocked yet. Have the gear for this event in tier 14, at least two mutants and two kill characters. How would you feel about global and one city character left? Uh, Phoenix when she's back, Colossus, Ultron, and Shuri, who have in mind. Keep up the hell, dude. So if you if you want to, if you need to fill it out, you could go Phoenix, Colossus, Ultron, and Shuri. And then last, I, if 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 it were whatever, I would go Emma last right there. So those those are who I would use for global. We need beast. Wait. That's not a question. I meant greetings, bro. All right. When do you think Beast will be farmable? And where do you think he's most likely to go? All right. So I, for some reason, I, I don't know if it really makes sense as far as timing. I'm not really thinking about the order of the cadence, what they're releasing characters in. But I, I'm thinking Beast Raid Store for some reason. So that's that's where my gonna get, guess is going to be. Uh, you mentioned a campaign note. I think uh, if it would be if it were to be a campaign note, I think that next Doom chapter is another likely candidate. And as far as timing, my guess and this is this is just guess, guys. I have, I have not heard anything uh, official or unofficial about Beast. I'd say one within the, within the next month. I think it's it's likely that he could be a, one of the farmable characters coming in October, uh, if not October, probably November. I think I think he is uh, due very very soon. Uh, Valley Flying, how are you doing? Wanted to know how is the power that is displayed on the characters being calculated from India Keep Smashing. So that is actually a uh, closely guarded secret. I know the guys at MSF.gg were trying to figure it out, and I know they've gotten pretty close to it, but. Uh, Fox Nick at the time would not confirm or deny if they had the correct formula, but they, they got very close and I think uh, it's it's looked upon very highly in the industry from what I'm what I'm hearing. But uh, I guess you, you, if you really want to know, you could ask the guys at MFZ.GG and maybe or maybe not. They will share it with you. Uh, greetings from Jersey. Hope all is well. Question on passive dominance. Black Bolt kills Deadpool while Domino is alive. What happens? I think... I think he'll stay dead. I think Deadpool will stay dead. Uh, I don't know. If, if you guys have seen that that interaction in the in gameplay and have some real stuff, then let me know. But I think I think uh, he's gonna stay dead. Idea for PvP: Make it three round tournament in which you have to redraft rounds uh, from two or three balance of your characters. That would be interesting. The the thing I would push back against that is the time sink. Now, for a lot of players that love PvP, this would be awesome. I think I think if they added this in addition to some of the other game modes, we really cool. So you know. You, you got to really go down to your roster. This would make more use of your roster. I like that idea. I think there'll be a lot of pushback from the community with this because there's so many people that don't like PvP right now. So the people that don't like PvP, they'll be like, this is making this take so much longer. I got to play three battles instead of one. The one battle takes a lot longer. So uh, I would like this. I would enjoy this. I think a lot of the community that does like PvP would like this. Uh, as long as this is not a milestone, I think a bunch of the community would be happy. But I, I would like to see this as another option with the classic draft, the balance draft, and then this. I, it would be cool. Best of three. Uh, my friend Zince has been trying to play Supernatural vs. Hydra, although it doesn't seem to work. Can you help? I sent a screenshot in DM. Uh, my, my best help would be use a different team versus Hydra. Uh, 
Use use Hydra 2.0. Use the Inhumans. Use use the Symbiotes. Uh, uh, Supernatural is best for other teams. So use use them there. They're, they're good against you know a lot of the. Uh, they they can take out Shield. They can take on the Mercs. You, you probably got to punch down with both of them, but they they can take out other teams. Don't use Supernatural versus Hydra, brother. I finally broke a BKT. Now that I have Black Order built up as a late game player. What did you do with Minerva and the Guardians after that? Uh, I, I still have them on a Tech Minerva team. So pretty much just took Thanos out, put Vision into his spot, and that is the team I'm running right now. They're okay in Blitz. Once in a while, they could win on 8.3. More often than not, they're a Tier 8 team. They're okay in War. I, there's certain teams that they can take out, but... Uh, it's an older team. It doesn't it doesn't stand up to a lot of the metas right now, but that's how I'm using them I'm not saying that's the best version of the team that you should be using them in but uh, that's 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 what I'm doing right now, brother uh, Hope all's well in southern Indiana here. Love your content question with the supernatural deal this week 100 charges each for $25 Do you think scopely is foreshadowing the new legendary to be supernatural unlocked? Stay safe out there uh, I don't I, I personally I think this is a catch-up mechanic uh, there, I haven't heard anything about a supernatural meta, about a next legendary. There, it, it could be anything. I, I, honestly, the team that unlocks the next meta may not even be out yet, depending on when the next legendary character is coming. I mean, we just got Doc Ock. So I expect there to be about six months between the next one. So we may not even have the team yet. I think that the supernatural on all the other deals that they're running is just to kind of help new players catch up by spending some money and... Uh, Get their frustration boiling say hey this is a pretty good deal i can catch up pretty good with this let me buy this i, I think that's all that is brother uh not sure what to do with my five red star ultimates i had nothing put him back in your roster uh that's what i did with mine i don't know i never put a thing into him but i i keep thinking there's a team that he must be great on given he's hard to get I'm trying to figure out how to prioritize relative to uh, SS uh, and Doc Ock, I Sinister Six. I'm, I'm thinking Scientist Supreme when I see SS. All right, incoming Symbiotes and X Force. So if, if we were to prioritize Ultimate, Sinister Six, Symbiotes, X Force, dudes, guys, Symbiotes is the way you want to prioritize. So current team and the new characters coming up, that is who are you who you want to prioritize. Uh, Sinister Six, they're very good on war offense and defense. X Force, very good on war offense, and then Ultimus. Not sure. I would prioritize all of those characters before Ultimus, brother. Uh, but Symbiotes. Symbiotes is, is my answer to that team, to that question. Been grinding hard as getting many red star orbs as I can. Finally pull my first red star character. Two elite. One elite four during the Octopus increased drop and pulled. Ravager. Bruiser. Oh my goodness. Single worst character in the game. Can't explain how disappointing it is. What a joke. People having the worst pull ever. What can Scopely do to make... Uh, what should be an awesome exciting event not make you feel like you want to uninstall years of progress What can you do? I think I think what they can do is Introduce more of the silver and gold promotion into the in-game economy. I think that's the best way I'll uh, buy the stuff in the store. This gives you a chance and Maybe you get something good, but if not you're not like super disappointed like you are I think the solution to this is just give more silver and gold promotion credits so that you can upgrade the character that you want with those things instead of having to take a year to upgrade one character to seven stars just just introduce more into the economy somehow especially those gold ones brother uh trying to make use of some homeless characters who would you recommend as the fifth avenger out of ant-man wasp or vision so i'm uh, not wasp i don't i don't think she has the avengers tag so be come down to ant-man or vision vision i like him on that tech nerva team like we talked about so I, i'm gonna keep him there but he would work very good on this team i'm gonna say ant-man though he's He's a little slow, but he has a very good kit. Black Widow's going to give him speech. He has a lot of speed, so he can apply those slows on the enemies. He can apply ability blocks on the enemies, so Ant-Man would be my choice out of those, but uh, that's just based on who, what I have. Vision, I think, is a very good character. You can make the case for either one of them, but I would not go Wasp. Uh, next question. Greetings from North Carolina, brother. Currently in Dark Dimension 3 Cosmic for City. I have Simulate Spider-Man, Carnage done, looking for a long grind at Venom. Or do I just take up my five red star Doc Ock instead? Uh, it's kind of like a similar question, brother. I would go symbiotes here. Unless you're super focused on war and you need a real hardcore either war offense or war defense, I would go symbiotes here. The, the symbiote team is looking strong and I'm trying to divert all my resources or saving all my resources to put it towards these uh, next characters that are coming up. Because yeah, this, this team is looking strong, brother. Uh, first time question, ask a question. Love your content. Watch every week. Getting frustrated uh, trying Aimtron against Asgardians in war because it never works for me. And then I see the same team punch up huge against my Asgardians, wondering what I am doing any wrong pro tips. So you got to look at who 
you have you got th uh, as far as power level on the enemy team sometimes sometimes the target that you want to go for super strong you want to try to take out either hella loki or thor first depending on their power level thor because of all his aoe attacks that he's getting uh but i think the more priority attack is either going to be hella or loki loki i want to avoid the characters from going into stealth once you get that taunt off a of sif you should be pretty good and the only thing you got to watch is that taunt from loki but if he's off the field and you take him out first uh very very good try to make use of your disrupted as well if you get uh some disrupted characters they won't be able to go to stealth so that should be a priority kill but uh try to get a eltron going very good he is he is really what makes the team a lot of times i lose aim very early and it ends up being just ultron that uh beats the asgardian so the other thing make sure your ultron is built up enough as well if i'm assuming you're using a max level ultron but if you're not make sure he is uh, as close to max level as possible brother uh hey valley pvp is broken when people are losing they force close their app and then you don't get any points for the win or the loss please spread the lose the news tell people don't do that they are bs lose i agree don't do not do that that is bad take the loss who cares it's not you're not getting ranking for it anyway now uh I, I lost my battery yesterday and it may have looked like my force closed like cl force closed so i apologize about that but outside of that there should be no force closed that is just that is just totally wrong with that uh the game mode so yeah if you're gonna lose take the lose i actually if someone if i'm playing a game and someone just quits and takes the loss i'm like yeah i beat them so bad that they had to quit and if i'm losing i'm like here here just take it quit i'm giving them win i was like you beat me so bad just take it so just take the loss guys it, it doesn't matter or give the loss away it does it doesn't matter guys this, this pvp is for fun don't don't force close at least not on purpose at least not on purpose uh I unlock all of the black order but i was wondering which stat should i unlock it should be okay to start using them uh thanos and ma are the only two at high level and gear at the moment a lot of that team you need a very strong call because he's gonna keep that uh keep the enemies off of your main team so as far as power level that's gonna be very subjective i mean if you're a newer player you could use them right away even at low power levels if you're a mid-game player probably want to wait a little bit and an end game player i mean where i'm at now 400 i would say minimum to start using him in the arena in raids where i'm at in war where i'm at that'd be the minimum but it's it's depends on where you are but yeah you need a strong call you need a strong thanos and the rest of them uh keep them alive and keep them protected uh and that is that is the job of thanos and cole with all the new characters over the past year do we think we'll still see an increase in war team soon maybe increase to 10 teams on defense three more attacks for war we have all these teams and nowhere to use some of them except for blitz and blitz will soon have auto sim so this this is something i don't think i would mind too much after the auto sim comes out because right now blitz just takes up a lot of time in the game especially if you're someone that wants to put up a decent score in blitz just even if you're putting it on full auto just takes a lot of time so it just the low times take a lot so if you're just auto 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 uh take the win take the loss it's gonna save a lot of time and opens up uh things like this to have longer wars so i wouldn't mind this uh, it does give us a way to use some more of our teams because right now there's there's no way to use all of our teams there's no one game mode that we could use all of our teams it was supposed to be war this is where we were using our, a lot of our teams when it first came out but yeah there's there's, there's too many teams now so um I, i'd like to see it but i would like to see this after war uh after after blitz gets solved do you recommend doing all 450 core refreshes for the event campaign for scream yes yes i do uh, scream is looking to be a very good character symbiotes are looking to be a very strong team don't want to miss out on this if you're uh if you're a player that really wants to be a part of the meta how many shards can you farm this way over the course of the event so normally i do all of those 50 core refreshes for these events and i've been getting my characters up to five star now i do buy one or two offers and that's probably about a hundred shards if it's if i'm lucky it's about a hundred shards if i'm not it's probably 80 shards let's say for the sake of argument it's 100 though 310 is the five star character on log so about 210 give or take is about what i'm getting for these events but obviously a lot of that is rng and everybody's results are going to be different but depending on what uh, if you buy the offer or if you're just uh, spending cores on this because yeah you, you got to open those orbs as well it's not just the spending the cores uh next question brother greetings for all the way from montana 
What's up, man? How are you doing? Do you think the tragic loss of Chadwick Boseman requires Scopely to rework Black Panther under uh, Wakandans? Uh, I, I don't think it requires them to. I think it gave them an opportunity to if they were already thinking about this. Now, when he did pass away, they did a couple things. They gave out some Black Panther shards. They canceled the Wakandan double drop, the Chaos Theory event. They just gave out the stuff. I think if they wanted to do something, it would have given the opportunity to do something back then. I think a month later, the opportunity is kind of passing, but I think the more likely time for them to get a rework is when the Black Panther 2 movie comes out. Who knows when that'll be now that we are getting all these movies delayed and pushed back, but I think that is the time that we will see the Wakanda's rework. Now, that's the pessimist in me. Obviously, I'm hoping that it'll be sooner than that because, yeah, I want my Wakanda's working as well as uh, they should be. Well, I've got almost 150 gold credits. Congratulations on that. Uh, not sure what to do. I can take down seven red star. At the moment, my Black Order team is not holding and I get wrecked whenever I take someone, take on someone with a seven red star Thanos. He's not on my main Ultima seven team. So I only use him in arena and blitz. My other option, Simul Spider-Man is six red star, save another rest for six red star in the future. He is on, he's on my main Ultima seven team. Black Bolt, seven red star. He's also on my main Ultima seven team. Uh, I was keen on Black Bolt till I checked GG and says Black Bolt damage not that much higher when going to 67. You think it make a huge difference in uh, Ultimate 7. So you got a couple options. What is more important to you, the raids or the arena? I normally go for arena first, get that set, and then after that I go uh, the raids and then war. Uh, those That's the priorities for me. So if your priorities are different, then Black Bolt, if you're using him in, in uh, Ultimate 7, I think that would be good. I don't know about the damage increase, but... Yeah, a seven red star black bolt is better than the six uh, six red star black bolt. Give you more damage, help make that game mode easier. But when talking about arena, uh, your black order is not holding you. You're looking to upgrade uh, Thanos from six to red star. I'm assuming because you're you're having those credits, so you already have a six star red uh, Thanos. I would recommend getting call up if your black order is not holding. Now, black order can beat black orders. A lot of teams can counter black order. I, I don't know if uh, any there's any solid foolproof. Uh, you're not going to lose on war on arena defense, but getting your call up will make it a lot more challenging for the opponents. Also, look at your placement of your Black Order team. There's some placements that are more challenging than the others. I'm experimenting with mines, and I guess the best guess is what gives your Black Order the most problems. Uh, so, with that said, you can go call if you want to specifically invest in your Black Order team. It'll make your uh, arena offense a lot better. But uh, Black Bolt is probably I would how I would go if I'm focused on uh, Ultimate 7, brother. Or maybe just hold all of them and invest, invest it all in a symbiote team, brother, when they come out. Because they, they, they're looking to be very, very strong. So that might be the way to go for this question. Just... Just hold it and, and invest in the symbiotes. Hey, Valley, what's up with these glitchers in PvP? The entire game went in simo before it started. My Phoenix never turned dark. Uh, not sure. It's not something that I've experienced too much. I did experience this once, though. I don't know if it's specifically in PvP, though, uh, where I, I went to another app and my phone came back in the Marvel Strike Force, and it was almost like it was in debug mode. I couldn't click on the buttons, but it had a button there that said sim on or off. I couldn't. Nothing would work when I clicked on it. So it was just a, basically a screenshot that I got. You've probably seen those screenshots uh, from time to time of that sim. And we saw it live in the game uh, last week where people were just able to sim. So uh, it, it's it's a bug. I, I don't know if it's a glitchers. I don't know if it's someone doing something in PvP. I think it's just a bug, though. And hopefully just restarting your device will... Uh, trigger. That's that's what happened. That's what worked for me when I went into that weird sim mode in the in the past. Hey, Valley, it's Marshy DS from your streams. What is up, brother? I I, I feel like I talk to you every morning. I got a six red star Doc Ock from the Elite Five Gold Orb. Nice, nice. That I got for finishing the Sinister Milestones. Don't have Doc Ock yet. Cannot do the Negasonic. Do more. No, no matter how hard I try. Any tips? Uh, I did it with my Wave One Avengers and Nick Fury and Shield Medic. So I used Captain America, Hulk and uh, Thor. And we got two taunts right there. We got a taunt from Captain America. We got a taunt from Hulk. We got Thor there to give people some damage back. We got a heal there from Medic. We got a little tiny heal there from Fury. We have some other minions that they can summon to take some pressure off your main characters from Fury. Defense ups from Fury. Defense ups from Captain America. Gave that team a lot of survivability. So that's what I use. Hopefully that helps you in that. But uh, if not, any, and anybody has any other tips for that Negasonic Doom Ward note, uh, leave them in the comments, guys.
Uh, hey, Valley, thanks for the content. With Sim Blitzing coming, can we give Scopely a suggestion? Seeing as content has been made on who attacks first in most battles, do you think it would make the Sim Blitz battles even easier if you could select uh, which enemy team members should be targeted first by tapping their portrait before selecting the battle? Uh, it would make it easier, but again, the point of these Sims are just to make it quick. Uh, sometimes you'll lose, sometimes you'll win, just like if you went into battle and hit auto right away. Sometimes it's going to line up on the right target, sometimes not. Uh, I, I would rather have speed. Instead of clicking the extra button, I just I just read out a boom, 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 boom. Click on these, save me time. Sometimes I'll lose, sometimes I won't. But uh, with some teams like Black Order, where I just go into a blitz battle, hit auto, those teams should win. Every other team, if you're concerned about their placement, maybe drop down with some of your bad teams and win some of those uh, in teams that you need to select a target. Or uh, there's some teams like the Symbiotes that, or, or even Wakandans that it's hard to win with them on full auto. You need to play with them correctly. You need to use your skills in the right order. So some of those teams, you're not going to be able to win on full auto. But uh, I, as, as cool as it would, I would, I would rather just uh, have them keep it like it, like it was, uh, what is that, debugged in the game last week and, uh, and just go for the speed aspect of this. Uh, hello Valley finish the second run of DD3 and now have five red star ultimates What's the best team competition to use him in for war so this is a slightly different uh, question than the last one also about that ultimus but uh, from what I, I don't use him I don't use him in war but what I'm heard you got Korath there you have ultimus you have Minerva I heard Captain Marvel worked really well on the team uh, Cyborg has some synergy with um, with uh, ultimus as well so that is a good team uh let me let me know what your best kree team is guys I, I don't use ultimus at all he's on a trash team for me and blitz and i don't use him in war uh but but i heard they could counter a lot of cool things if you use that taunt from korath and then you clear that taunt and all the the debuffs off the end or all the buffs off the enemy team with ultimate's big move right there uh word up valley supernaturals were great halloween themed team to come our last october what are the chances we have more halloween themed characters as another team or extension of the symbiotes i would love to see blade morbius the living vampire or since hulu's coming out with a new marvel show hell's from the son of satan so i think uh i think we know the characters that are coming in october uh she hulk anti our uh, scream has both been confirmed anti venom been rumored and data mine so i think those are the characters that are coming in october so i think the chances of a more supernatural is coming in october uh is is not very likely now maybe maybe for november as like a post halloween celebration they could add that i think a lot of the things got shifted around a lot of our plans got shifted around because of the quarantine because of covid so uh, hopefully we will see these characters soon and not have to wait till next October before we get some of these characters in the game. Uh, today is the day of the Greg mystery. All right. This is a long post guys. You see the full one, go to the discord server, but, uh, today's a long day. Greg mystery is finally to be resolved. So you're to summon lots of Greg's on your team. You'll need to follow these steps. You must have a Hella on your team and a Hella on the enemy team. Then you must use sinister to clone Hella. Now when an enemy like Greg's use your Hella, summon two Greg's. Uh, this will result in an army of Greg's and you will be invincible with a new edition of Scream. There's going to be a carnage. All right. Nice. Oh, actually, we have a question here. This is supposed to be a collection game. So would it be interesting to have a little biography of every character like other games in MCOC or Swaga? Uh, this makes every character more valuable for the players. What do you think about this? I love this, especially for the more obscure characters, uh, characters that I didn't know about before they even came to the game. Who are some of them? Uh, Ironheart wasn't really familiar with her before Future Fight. Same thing with uh, Crystal. Uh, yo, yo, a bunch of these characters uh, before they came to the game. I wasn't super familiar with them and it would be cool to have a bio, especially since this is this is a game that's not true to just the comics. This is not just true to the MCU. It's kind of its own its own universe here. So it would be nice. I think I think I would like that. So um, as long as it doesn't cause any more bugs in the game. Uh, hello from the UK, brother. Hope you are well. Have noticed the achievements to collect 24 mutants. Uh, and there's only 22 in the game. This, do you think uh, this is Gambit and Rogue? Could also ask Drew what he thinks too. So, uh, actually, I don't have to ask Drew. Unfortunately, this this has been in the game for a while. Not just with mutants, but all of those tags are as far as achievements. There's only been X amount of mystics and cosmics and things like that. So, uh, this has been in there for a while, and I think this is just future proofing them. I mean, if you look, if we looked at the data, the, the data mine files, they've had uh, achievements all the way to level 85 since inception. I think the level cap there was level 60. So I think this is just stuff for the future. And uh, when when they add these characters, we'll be able to unlock these achievements.
achievements. There, there will be a lot of achievements like this that we won't be able to unlock uh, based on their release schedule, though. So uh, this this has been it's been like that for a little while. So unfortunately, I want to get my hopes over over this, but we do got to remember that Facebook post, Gam Row. They they tease that for a reason. So sometime, dear Mr. Flyin. <laughs> Can we consider Dr. Octopus a real legendary character when he's only excellent in war offense? Overall, he's really bad in other game modes, average in war defense, bad in U7, useless in raids, uh, and arena, and average to good in DD3. Where would you rank the character amongst other legendaries? Uh, not, not that high. Uh, versatility for me is very important, and it looks like he's awesome in war offense, but... Uh, I think you've done a little more plus testing than me, so War Deep is not that great. Ultima 7, he has a long cooldown. Same thing with Dark Dimension. I don't think he would be that great in there. Uh, I, I, I'm sure some people have some success, but it wouldn't be one of my first choices to bring into that game mode. Uh, I'm even not liking him as much in PvP because of his long uh, cooldowns and real slow. So uh, he's pretty low. He's pretty low, in my opinion. Uh, versatility is very important for me, so... I, I I guess he's better than Iron Man, but uh, I, I don't know if he's better than the other legendaries. I, the ability to summon another character is pretty nice, though, so giving him a slight advantage, but probably probably towards the lower lower half of the legendaries. Valley, I hope you're doing well, brother. I finally clear DD3 for the first time. Do you have any tips for the time run? I'm in a time run myself, and uh, I, I noticed the big thing that I'm doing, making the mistake that I'm making is not doing the nodes every day. Sometimes I forget, especially on the weekends when I'm not streaming. So I guess I guess the big thing that I'm struggling with is remembering to do them. So just remember to do them. Uh, but I mean, if you've been through it the first time, you know the nodes, you know what it takes, you know the pitfalls of all those Miss Marvels, of all those Iron Fists on those sorts of nodes. So try to avoid them. But that that, that would be, I mean, you, you have your characters, you've already been through it once. So uh, we're, we're in the same place. We're in the same place, I think, brother. Uh, with a Blitz Auto Sim coming later, do you think they could change character release message shift towards PvP? Have you heard any rumors of this? Uh, I've not heard any rumors of this, but I have heard it mentioned as a possibility by the community a lot um i i don't think at, at least now i think maybe down the road i think the community is a little too salty and i think they're doing a little more experimentation with pvp before they would do that as a blitz character obviously i could be wrong they do like to surprise us from time to time with things so uh this is what i'm hoping they would get a little more data on before they uh do a character release from this but i, I think they're still going to do character releases for blitz even with the auto sim coming uh, what is going on, Valley? Curious to know what music you listen to, especially when you are pumping some iron. One of my favorites to listen to is the band In This Moment. I have not heard of them. I will check them out, though. Uh, it really depends on my mood. I mean, sometimes it's Metallica. Sometimes it's podcasts. Sometimes I listen to people just talking, not music. Uh, right now, I've been listening to a lot of reggae. UB40, Lucky Dube, things like that. Uh, I, I don't know. For some reason, reggae, reggae is doing it for me in the gym uh, the past couple weeks. But it shifts. You ask me next week what, what I'm listening to, it could be different. It could be it could be 80s music. It could be like oldies. I don't know. I, I'm very eclectic with what I listen to at the gym. Uh, so I mean, Sometimes even slow songs motivate me. So it really depends on my mood brother but uh pod podcast is my my main thing but right now i'm into music kick so that is it and that is it for this video guys like i said exciting stuff coming up guys tomorrow so make sure you are a subscriber make sure you click that notification bell guys because this is a video tomorrow that you do not want to miss so Share this with all your friends. Let them get this preview, the meal back, and then let them know that they got to see tomorrow's video. I will see you guys next time. I will see you guys tomorrow. Make sure you guys check me out on social media and check out some of the links down below, guys, that support the channel. All of them are really, really good stuff. Give me a Hulk fist bump before you go. Valley flying out.